Hours. How is everyone doing? I am Hallie Sherman from Speech Time Fun. I'm a little early tonight, earlier than usual, but I was excited to get on here and share with you my low prep therapy ideas. And this week we are talking about binder rings. Hard it up if you love binder rings too. Do you? Do you? Okay, good. I'm not. I'm glad I am not alone. Good, 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 good. If you know of anyone that also loves binder rings, feel free to tap the Perry Buddy, swipe to the side, and share it out. Uh, screen, if you want to screenshot that Bitly link, that's to uh, my blog post all about this, and I'm gonna and I link to a whole bunch of products um, and freebie, freebies and other things that I found from other uh, TPT sellers that I love that I can use with binder rings. I am all about binder rings today and I'm going to show you some ways to just quickly use them but that takes very quick prep. Okay, I'm going to flip this bad boy around. Hi everyone! How is everyone doing? Hi! I am Hallie Sherman from Speech Time Fun and I am here every Thursday sharing with you low prep therapy ideas using what you already have in the therapy room or that you can easily get really, really cheap and easily. Okay, any Target, you know, Staples, Amazon, you can get the, uh, the binder rings in all different sizes, all different colors in so many places. I've even seen them in a local dollar store. Um, I love them, they're so great, they take up little space. I keep them in my little toolbox thing that I um, have in my therapy room that I keep all my different uh, e easy access supplies. I keep my, you know, paper clips and, you know, post-its, all that kind of stuff ready to go. And I keep my binder rings there. So I always have a large stash. I always try to, like, stock up over the summer so I have enough to last me throughout the entire, entire year. Okay, so I love to use them for so many different ways, okay? I love to use them because it helps keep together visuals. I am all about visuals. If you know anything about me, if you follow my blog or me on any form of social media, I am all about sentence strips and visual aids. Okay, so whether it is giving students um, a cue for articulation or um, fluency or WH questions, I am all about having on a binder ring ready to go so I can easily grab it. You can easily hang it if you have like a metal um, magnetic hook. I have a lot of them that um, there's little clips or there's so many ones that have like just uh, the tape that you can tape to the wall. So you, you have, if you have a clip, you can um, hook them up right under your dry erase board or anywhere. Um, I have them on my filing on my filing cabinet ready to go and I can easily grab a visual whenever I need it and it's ready to go. So not only do I like to use it, but I also like to sometimes give students that are working on carryover, they can take the um, visual with them, keep it in their desk, remind themselves, they can take it home to practice, okay? So the binder ring just keeps everything together so papers don't get lost. Just take, take an index card, take a Sharpie, write on it, hole punch it, put it on a um, um, binder ring, and it's ready to go. You are done, okay? I mean, if you want to save it and preserve it and use it year after year, I highly recommend, you know, laminating it using cardstock and all that fun stuff. But if you want just a quick visual aid and, you know, need it in a heartbeat, index card. I'm all about it. So I'm going to show you some pictures of some ones that I love and love to use all the time. And, and the link that I gave you for my blog post has so many products that I found, freebies and, um, other things from a whole bunch of different TPT sellers to show you articulation fluency. I gathered a whole bunch of ones that I love and have myself and use all the time in my therapy room. So if you you know want to check that blog post about with so many different products that I found, I was scoping around um, using the ones that I love and ones that I plan on getting you know tomorrow if I don't already have them. So I'm going to show you some pictures. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Check the blog post. It might be you on there. So I'm going to show you a quick visual that I um, use all the time. I like to teach my students to not say, I don't know. That's like one of my big pet peeves. They're not allowed to say, I don't know, in my therapy room. So I have a visual ready to go, and, and they can take, and a lot of them have requested to make them and take them with them, so they have made these. And I'm going to show you what they, it's a visual, so to teach them other things to say other than, I don't know. I'm going to show you that in a second. One sec. Okay, so here it says, can I have a hint? Please repeat. I need help, and I need more time. And you know, they, let them. You know, it could be a whole lesson in itself. 
talking about, you know, when you need some help, instead of saying, I don't know, instead of giving up, what can you do? You can practice, you can role play, and then they can make a visual for themselves and bring it back to their classrooms and keep in their desks to remind themselves. And this way, the teachers can see what you're working on. There's good carryover. And I just use the little um, binderings, so, and I got a whole bunch of them. Right? Great for struggling readers too. Exactly. Struggling spellers. Anyone struggling in anything. Um, uh, you know, this is great for students with auditory processing needs. Um, students with struggling readers. And students that just need more time. And just need that reminder of it's okay that they need help. This is just gives them that confidence of, you know, if I say I need help, I actually get the help. If I say I need more time, I actually get it. And it's okay. Okay, here, okay, so here, that's one of my visuals that I just love, and I use all the time. All right, EET carryover, okay? You can have the students make the symbols, see if they remember them. It, you know, after you've been practicing using the EET, obviously it's a little too expensive to give students um, the EETs to take with them. I, I mean, I have 65 students. I can't have 65 student strands. I only have five of them in my therapy room. But they can make little visuals for themselves using the binder rings and ready to go. That's one way for EET carryover. You can have the teachers, you know, you can train them on this and they, they could keep that, you know, accessible in their classroom. So if students want to work on um, describing or, you know, whether it's writing or reading, there you go. They're, when they're learning new vocabulary, they can have that ready to go in their classroom. So I'm all about uh, quick visual aid using binder rings and keeping it together. And look, it's just an index card. All right, here is my board game visual. Um, of course, I accidentally chopped off the actual uh, mag <laughs> magnet, but um, the magnet is holding it together on my uh, filing ca my cabinet. So it's ready to go when it, right where where this cabinet keeps all my games. And here is my game visual aids, ready to go, right together, so I, I can take out the game and take out the visual. Easily accessible. And then here is just a book that I made um, using Enchanted Learning um, for students, for my, you know, basic vocabulary students. I just printed out the book, made this, um, pictures with Board Maker, and kept it together on a binder ring. And a lot of them took it home to practice and brought it back, so it's very and I just laminate it, so easy to go, ready to go. Okay. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the pictures of my favorite um, products and things that I like to do with binder rings. I'm, like, as you can tell, I'm all about just taking index cards, throwing in a uh, hole puncher, and making a quick visual aid. You can do our tick words, and if you wanna send them home for practice, just you know, have the kids make them write it themselves and or draw pictures of them, put them on a binder ring and send them home for practice. This way those papers don't get lost. You don't have to put them in an envelope. Just put them right there and, you know, and have like, you can even have um, like a Ziploc bag that can go back and forth with the student and it has the ring with all the cards and they have to bring it back and like, you know, the parent can sign that they practiced or something like that. So this way, it does, it's just an easy way you meet. We made emotion cards. Exactly. You can do emotions. You can do um, to any visual aid that you might need, any um, practice. If you're, if you're drilling um, verb tenses, if you're drilling uh, conjunctions, anything you're doing, just throw it on a binder ring, have the students write it out themselves, have them practice. Or if they come to, to speech and have like a science text, test tomorrow and you want to practice the science words, you can have them write the words, have the definition on the back, and make themselves their own little um, study guide ring, and, and they can take that home with them. Um, I know a lot of teachers use, um, there's the uh, index card holder boxes, like you can get them at the dollar store, and they can um, make them, put them in the box and send them home, and then the next time they can add more words the next time, and they can go back, and you can do that with articulation therapy too, or any sort of um, therapy idea. So, that was a whole bunch of ideas for using um, binder clips in therapy. It's cheap, it's easy. I, you know, like I said, I buy like a hundred and it lasts me the whole year, pretty much. And that's with giving students visual aids and things like that, because you can easily swap them. You can take out the, the articulation cards that they mastered and throw on some new ones. So it's very easy to do. I highly recommend it. I'm all about um, carryover ideas. Um, hanging things so it's easily accessible and 
just so this keeps papers together if you're sending it over for homework or to the classroom. And the students love making it, so let them do it. I highly recommend it. It's easy and it's a whole activity within itself. Yes, you can clip it onto the clothing. And if you have, um, like if you wear a lanyard um, for like with your ID card, you can easily clamp it onto your lanyard. Like say you're walking in the hallways and you like, um, you know, look at me or stop or wait sort of symbols. If you have like students, um, that have like ABA and things like that, you can just put the symbols right on your lanyard, ready to go using the binder ring. So I highly recommend that. So even like um, conversational um, prompts, if you're like wanting to teach the kids when they're walking with you, I don't know about you, when it's like silent and, or like I'm pulling teeth, just I'm like, you can talk to me, I'm the speech teacher, we can talk while we're walking back and forth to speech, it's allowed for me. You know, it's not, you know, when you're in the hallway walking with like your whole class, it's not allowed, but with me, it's allowed. <laughs> and sometimes having some like conversation starters right on your, lan on your lanyard if you have an ID card with the binder ring, easy to go, ready to go. So. There you go. I hope you find some of these tips helpful. Feel free to visit my blog post, see um, some articulation prompts and some fluency prompts and a whole bunch of different things that I found um, that I highly recommend. So take care. Have a good night. I am Hallie Sherman from Speech Time Fun, and I will see you next week on SLP Blogger Live. And if you're not already following me on my Speech Time Fun Periscope account, I am there every Wednesday at around 8 o'clock too. So there's two nights where you can catch me with some quick tips and tricks. Take care. Have a good night. You are so welcome. Bye-bye.